Urso, an important town in Beatica, came under the jurisdiction of the Conventus Astigitano, modern-day Ecija, and formed one of the four administrative divisions of the province. The town played an active role in the civil war for power between Pompeii and Caesar, as this account by geographer Strabo recalls. Those ones in which Pompeii's sons were defeated, Munda, Ategua, Uso, Tukis, Ulia and Aspavia, all of which were not too far from Corduba. The Roman settlers kept the Iberian name of modern-day Osuna, Uso, although the town sometimes appears under different names in historic texts. Following the Roman Beatica route from Almedania, we get to Urso, the towns which in the past were separated by 73 Roman miles. are 110 kilometers apart, approximately an hour and a half's drive, a journey which would have taken the Romans nearly three whole days to complete. We approach the town by following the old royal road from Granada, then one of Urso's main forms of communication but now used for herding livestock. On the outskirts it joins the Maximo de Cumanas, a straight road which crossed the town from east to west. This is one of the few remains of the pre-Roman wall of Asuna, still preserved, the former Urso. In 1902, a neighbor from Asuna found some stones with some reliefs that attracted the attention of Arthur Angels, a French researcher who was in the south of the Iberian Peninsula looking for remains to take to the Louvre Museum. Arthur Angels found these objects interesting and agreed with the person who found them to show him the site in order to carry out some excavations and rescue more reliefs. Fortunately, many more reliefs were found, making up the series now known as the Osuna Iberian Reliefs one of the most important Iberian statue examples, together with the Dama de Elche and the Dama de Baza. Just before the gateway to the town we find the necropolis, which lies alongside the old Roman road. The Twelve Tables of Law, a legal text which contain the rules conceived to guarantee the peaceful coexistence of the Roman population, banned burials and cremations within the town. The legal code of Urso itself also contains two chapters with the same restrictions establishing fines for those who violate them. However, remembering the dead was an intrinsic part of Roman culture, and thus a necropolis, meaning literally city of the dead, was built just outside the walls of the city as a burial site. The De Las Cuevas Necropolis in Osuna is made up of a series of grottos excavated into the rock which contain the tombs. Due to the type of burials and the very few documented decorative elements, it is probably dated between the 3rd and 8th century BC. In this type of burial, the dead body was wrapped in a shroud and buried lying on its back. The tomb was covered with stone slabs and sealed with sand and lime mortar, which gave it a similar appearance to that of the inside of the grotto. Today, only the caves on the southern side are accessible to the public.
Uso city wall, which is now half buried, predates the Roman period. It is made up of large sections reinforced by semicircular bastions and had a major role in the events related to the Battle of Munda. Although no official systematic excavations have been carried out, we do know that they were from this area. Based on indirect news from clandestine excavations and casual findings that have taken place throughout history, specifically, mosaics have been found here, remains of very beautiful Roman sculptures, and additionally, it was here where five bronze boards with the famous Osuna law were found at the end of the 19th century. It was at Munda, an area of uncertain location which seems to have been somewhere near to Uso, that the last battle waged between Caesar's followers Popularis and Pompey's sons Optimatis took place. As narrated in Bellum Hispaniense, an anonymous book written by one of Caesar's soldiers. Fabio Maximo. Fabius Maximus, whom Caesar had left at Munda to continue the siege, tightened his ring around the city. In their despair, the inhabitants fought amongst themselves and, after much bloodshed, were forced to leave. Lucharon entre sí, y después de una horrible carnicería, hicieron una salida. And from there they marched towards Urso, a garrison which had such strong natural defences that it dissuaded the enemy from assailing it. The battle was eventually won by Caesar, and Urso went down in history as the last enclave to remain loyal to Pompey's forces. Later, Caesar granted the town the status of Roman colony. Naming it Venetiva Iulia, it became one of the nine colonies of Beatica. Following the town's Decumanus Maximum, we come to the theatre, which is today enclosed by a private estate. Its cavea, with six levels and a 108 feet arch, is still fully visible. As part of its Roman legacy, Osuna has retained a series of hydraulic infrastructures from this period, including several wells and water cisterns, one of which is popularly known as La Peleta and could have possibly supplied water to the Forum. The famous tablas de bronze were found by accident on the site where the forum stood in the center of the Roman villa. After the Battle of Munda, Caesar's troops came to Osuna and conquered the city, and due to their traditionally being biased in favor of the Pompeians, Caesar punished the citizens and dispossessed them of their lands and settled his adepts in Old Urso and granted the city the status of a Roman city. Thanks to this, bronze tablets were engraved containing the colonial law which covered all aspects under which life in the city was governed. Que contiene todos los aspectos por los que se rige la vida de la ciudad. Anyone with the status of Decorion in the colony of Guenetiva Iulia, who, as Decorion from the colony, owns a building measuring no less than 600 roof tiles within the precinct outlined by the plough, and any colonist who is not a Decorion, a building measuring no less than 300 roof tiles within the two years following the establishment of the colony. The Civil Code of Law was one of the greatest achievements of Roman civilization and its influence is evident in the legal system which we still have now. However, in ancient Rome there was not a code of law as we would understand it today. 
and the Twelve Tables of Law were the only Roman form of legal code for a considerable period of time. The tables were on display in Rome's Forum and only contained a legal outline on certain issues. They were complemented with the opinions of high-ranking legal experts, juris consults. With time, the Twelve Tables became obsolete and the Empire set out to consolidate the establishing of laws. The interpretation and review of pre-existing jurisprudence led to a massive and chaotic amount of laws which needed to be organized and structured. This task culminated in the great legal compilations carried out by Justinian between 528 and 533 which have been known since the 6th century as the Corpus Iuris Civilis. Below is a quote by Roman philosopher, politician and orator Marcus Tullius Cicero about civil law in the 1st century BC. The law and everything that is on it should be desired in itself. Indeed, all good men love equity and law, and it is not right for a good man to wrongly wish what is not desirable in itself. Y no es propio de un hombre de bien desear equivocadamente lo que no es deseable por sí mismo. Consequently, the law should as of right be wished for and practiced, as should justice, and finally all the remaining virtues should also be practiced in themselves. Y así, en fin, todas las restantes virtudes deben ser practicadas por sí mismas. With the arrival of the Visigoths, the town started to develop westwards and entered a period of recession from which it partially recovered under Muslim rule. The Christian conquest led to the definitive expansion of the city towards the west with the occupation of the lower areas. After its occupation by Fernando III in 1240, Osuna passed through various different hands. In 1464, the Bio of Ursa Ona, which had been granted to the Counts of Urania, saw an explosion in monumental construction which reached its height with the Ducal Acropolis. This monumental complex comprised a collegiate church, the university and a hospital, later to become the convent of La Incarnacion, which houses a magnificent collection of religious art. Thanks to the patronage of Don Juan Telez Giron, the fourth Count of Urenia, Paolo III granted a papal bull authorizing the old parish to be transformed into a collegiate church in 1534. Its exterior decoration is austere. The main chapel, in Baroque style, contains paintings by José Ribera, Los Pañoleto, and a magnificent main altarpiece by Juan Guerra.
The Villa's long and eventful history is preserved in the Torre del Agua Archaeological Museum, which exhibits replicas of an Iberian relief known as the Toro do Osuna, and the Roman bronze tablets, the two most important archaeological pieces found in the area. In the lower part of the town there are numerous convents, churches and manorial houses. The finest examples are situated in Calle Sevilla and Calle San Pedro, the latter having been recognized by UNESCO as one of the most beautiful streets in Europe. Throughout history, Osuna's situation in beautiful countryside with protected natural areas has attracted numerous civilizations. To the north lies the Endoraic area, a series of lagoons which provide a wintering and feeding ground for thousands of migratory birds. There are plans to designate Osuna's Campiña a special bird protection zone, Zeppa, because it provides a safe haven for the most important stable group of great bustards in Andalusia. To the southwest of the town lies the natural landscape of the Blanco Salinoso River, in which intense erosion has formed a spectacular relief. The area is flanked by gallery forests and is home to an extraordinary rich range of wildlife. The Higuerones Gomera area has landscape features which are typical of the Sabetica media. There, human activity has barely had any influence on the rich ecosystem, with its lush, dense flora and a multitude of protected animal species. Taking in the town's monumental character is difficult to do in just one day, so perhaps the best option is to choose somewhere to stay from the wide range of accommodation on offer, which includes a number of renovated manorial houses and large country estates which retain the original flavor of the town's past. The traditional local cuisine features a range of dishes including a variety of salmorejo known as adoria, 
chickpeas with spinach and cod, and the popular gachas de San Arcadio, a sweet cream which is prepared for the festivities celebrated in honor of the local patron saint. Other local specialities include a hearty stew, a cod dish known as repapalillas de bacalao, and treats like the traditional confectionery products prepared in the town's convents. One of the most interesting craftwork products from Osuna are the unique ceramics whose decoration is inspired by the mosaics of the convent of La Encarnacion. Also typical are other ceramic objects, murals, vases, plates, oil pourers, olive containers, etc., depicting 18th century decorative motifs. Osuna's festive calendar includes fiestas and events which offer the perfect opportunity for visiting the town. Of special interest are its Easter celebrations, which were declared a fiesta of national tourist interest in 1999. Also very popular are the fiestas on the 12th of January, dedicated to the patron saint, Saint Arcadio, and a pilgrimage in honor of the other patron saint, the Virgin of La Consolacion, which takes place on the last Sunday in April. The town also hosts a fair in May and the traditional Vela of Nuestra Señora de Consolación, which is held in September. Osuna is easily accessible, especially by road as it is well situated on the A92, which means that the journey from Seville, Malaga or Córdoba is just under an hour, whilst from Granada it takes perhaps 30 minutes more. Osuna is a large town of 15,000 souls which dominates the fertile plains. The best inn is on the outskirts as you arrive from Seville. The top of the triangular hill is crowned by the castle and the collegiate church. The streets are chaotic and the buildings are whitewashed with lime from Moron. The carnations which are arranged in pots on the houses are superb. This is how English writer Richard Ford described the town in 1846. Many other prominent visitors from Pompeii to Washington Irving have walked along the streets of a town which, during the course of history, have witnessed the transformations which give Osuna its monumental character. For those who, by following the Roman Beatica route, have had the good fortune to visit the town, Osuna will be etched on their memory forever.